Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see right here from Radical Firearms. This is their integrally suppressed rifle. Uh, before we go down the rabbit hole too deep on the details of this one, I should note they also make it with just the upper. So you can buy just the upper if you want to. You can also buy this with just the upper in 300 black or a complete carbine like this in 300 black. But what's cool about having a upper like this is that it's not a SBR. So it is a single stamp gun, meaning that you only have to get one tax stamp to be able to purchase what you see right here. Because with the integral suppressor, the overall length of the barrel is 17 inches in this case. So it's longer than 16.5. So again, just one stamp and that would be for the suppressor and no SBR because it's pinned on there. So um, we're gonna do a number of tests throughout the video. We're gonna test the accuracy up next. After that, we're going to test the desk rating of this particular setup which is pretty darn good I'll just give you a heads up and then we'll come back here out on the dock and go over the details of the carbine that you see right here now we're gonna see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle here we have a few different loads up first is gonna be some uh, Pine Valley munitions this is just their 62 grain load it's not a SS 109 bullet for those wondering but it is a 556 chambering so target is downrange at 100 yards we have the primary arms 1 to 8x platinum scope on there uh, with the Griffin reticle for those wondering. And uh, everything else is factory. We have a CTK Precision Rest, which has seen better days, and a very high-tech sock filled with sand as a rear back. All right, let's see what we can get. Looks like a pretty good group from here. You definitely feel the mill spec trigger though. They ain't gonna get around it uh, compared to some fancy ones. All right, we'll go a little bit heavier here with some uh, Winchester. This is the 69 grain 223 chambering with the uh, Match King hollow point bolt tail load in there. And uh, we'll see how she likes it. Pretty solid group, I'd say. Um, just to kind of let you guys know, because I'm sure this is something that people will think of, um, I certainly would if I was looking at this uh, rifle here, is that uh, right now it's about 80 degrees out early March as I'm filming this, Lord knows when I'll release the video. Um, it's obviously direct bright sun coming, baking down right on us. And on that last shot, I just started to notice a touch of mirage uh, through the optic, uh, obviously coming off the suppressor. So pick that for what it's worth. So. Uh, next up, we have some Federal. This is the uh, 55 grain, rather, 223 chambering with the Barnes TSX bullet in there. It's lead free. This stuff is nasty. Uh, if you guys have ever seen gel tests of it, would want to be on the receiving end of it. That's for sure. So again, update on the Mirage, right after the first shot, I started to see it uh, this time. It's obviously getting hotter. Uh, next up, be some Gorilla ammunition. Again, 223 chambering with that uh, CR Match King open tip, uh, open tip match rather, uh, 69 grain bullet. It's a popular bullet, there's a reason for it. Most uh, 5.56, 223 barrels shoot it pretty darn well. So we'll see how the Gorilla loading does. Go check them out. First screw up there was the 62 grain Pine Valley stuff. And center to center, we're right at an inch and a half with that one. Then we came over with the Winchester 69 grain, great looking group here. Center to center, we're a touch over half an inch with that one, maybe like 0.6 uh, of an inch. So definitely a good group there. I believe up next, we came over here with the TSX. About an inch and a quarter on that one with the TSX bullets. So it seems to shoot most weights pretty darn well. Then we had the 69 grain Gorilla load here. Right at an inch center to center on that one. So the gun can certainly shoot, especially considering the thing has a mil spec trigger in it. 
Let's see how loud this little girl is here. We got everything set up, measured out, all that stuff. Uh, so it's uh, 1.6 meters off the ground. The meter is one meter to the left. And we'll see how it does. There you go. Now that we've got all the fancy testing out of the way, we're gonna walk you through this carbine here piece by piece. Before I do that, I should mention sort of how this came to be in my possession. So uh, for those of you guys who are new here and didn't watch my earlier radical review from last year, basically I've been running the channel for a few years now and I pretty much constantly trashed radical um, in the beginning years and, uh, and they deserved it in my opinion. I stand by that trashing. And that was simply because in my opinion, their QC was just not good. And there was just so many problems of radical guns and uppers and stuff like that out there on the market. And then a few years ago, probably what, three years ago now, at NRA show, um, they had hired a new guy to come on board. And basically his job was to improve the quality control of the law enforcement rifles that they were uh, building at the time for the contracts. Well, he did that. He understood specs. He understood uh, how to build guns, you know, the way they should be built, those sorts of things, and implemented those into their law enforcement line. And then very quickly they realized they should probably just do that to the entire line, and they did that. So again, I think it was three years ago, they tried to flag me down at NRA show, and I'm kind of a busy guy during those shows. I tend to have a lot of people trying to flag me down. So they weren't able to, but on the last day they were in my hotel lobby and uh, managed to get me and uh, basically explain what I just said to you, but in a lot more detail. And uh, so I agreed, I was like, fine, you know, I'll give one of your guns a fair shot, uh, as I give every gun that comes in here a fair shot. And uh, they sent one out, and again, I did a full review, you guys can check it out, of just what, kind of like one of their basic rifles. And I didn't have any issues with it at all. At the same time that that was happening, Rob Ski over at AK Operators Union did a 5,000 round test, and I'm almost positive the only thing that they had an issue with was the cam pin, which cam pins break, that is what it is. And that was at like 4,500 rounds. And it's like an $8 replacement. So after that, I was like, well, maybe they kind of have, you know, straighten their ways out, if you will. So um, they introduced this probably right after the last review I did. And I was like, well, I definitely want an integrated, integrally, excuse me, suppressed rifle. So that's what we have here. And like I said, they have it in 300 black or 10.5 and 5.56. Um, and we went with the 556 just because it's a little bit more common. Um, but 300 black, of course, gives you the option of subsonics, which are much more quiet than what you guys just saw there, of course, because they're not breaking the sound barrier. So what do we have here? Like I just intimated, uh, we have a 10.5 inch barrel. It's made out of 416R stainless steel. It has a one in seven twist. Um, and then uh, out here, right here at the gas block is where the baffles start. So that gas block is an integrated gas block as well as sleeve here, um, all in one piece. And then the baffles go out front for about seven inches past the muzzle. Again, giving you a 17 inch barrel, if you will. But one of the advantages of an integrally suppressed um, setup like this, as opposed to just running a typical can on a gun, is that the outer sleeve here, which is grade five titanium, goes all the way back to right here. So while the, the muzzle is probably right about here, just to kind of give you a, a frame of reference, the actual volume of the can is so much bigger, which is why we saw pretty darn good results out there, in my opinion, for a 10.5 inch, uh, 5.56 can, it was getting good decibel readings despite being a relatively narrow can because it has all that volume behind it around the barrel that you typically wouldn't have. Now, um, if you kind of look around the suppressor game, typically when you see stainless steel suppressors, you're gonna see them made out of 17.4 uh, stainless steel, which is very common. It's a very durable, very rugged steel. It does well with heat, all of those sorts of things that tend to matter with suppressors. Now they went with 4.16R, which totally makes sense to me. Um, I'm guessing I haven't asked them about this. I just, it makes logical sense in my mind um, that you want your barrel steel and your baffle steel, assuming that they're actually an integrally pinned together unit to heat up and cool down at the same time. So that way you don't have wild point of impact shifts and stuff like that during the heating and cooling cycle. Um, so again, that makes perfect sense to me. And like I said, titanium sleeve out there on the outside. Continuing on back, we do have their hybrid rail. It's the hybrid of an M-Lock and Picatinny. So uh, all the way, down to just about the end here uh, at three and six o'clock or three and nine o'clock position, excuse me, we have M-lock slots and then you have those Picatinny rails out there on the edge. And then probably a little bit, I'd say maybe five inches of Picatinny rail 
out there on the bottom, of course, all the way down on the top, we do have 1913 rail on there, mounting lasers, those sorts of things to get them to stay zeroed. Uh, incidentally, I do have the new Streamlight TLR1HL, which is the rifle light, but it also has the tape switch. So just, I'm sure folks will ask. <laughs> so it has the ability to run the light and the laser. So this is the light up front and the laser that you guys probably can't see right now, but trust me, it does work. We've shot it in a little light and a setup like this, you can do some pretty gnarly things with it. But one con I'm gonna give this gun right here, um, and I should mention this beforehand, uh, this gun right now has just over 2,000 rounds through it. So um, it's got a decent amount of rounds through it, and everything has been problem-free in terms of reliability. You guys saw the accuracy, I'm, I'm giving you a spoiler alert. But one thing that has kind of, I guess, we'll call it an issue, is that the rail, I doubt you'll be able to see it on camera, but I can move it forward and back about a quarter of a millimeter. Um, but it's secured here on the bottom by these two clamping screws and then this screw here that goes into the barrel nut. It's not going anywhere, but just looking at it right there, I can see that whatever dimensional difference there is there in the actual uh, hole there where the actual nut goes up, that's where it's moving. It's just that slight little bit. And then obviously the, the nut prevents it from going forward, which is good. Obviously <laughs> you don't want it going forward or uh, side to side or anything like that. It does have these ears back here at the back uh, preventing it from going side to side. But just pointing that out, it's not a big deal. It did not affect zero at all that I could see, at least with my shooting uh, of the laser, but it does go forward and back. Like I said, maybe a quarter of a millimeter. Through the magic of video editing, we have our upper receiver that is disassembled. The upper itself is made out of 7075 T6 aluminum, so mil spec in that regard. It does have M4 feed ramps on the inside, as you guys can see. When it came in, it did come in dry film lubricated. Good on them for that. Again, for a quote-unquote budget type of setup, that's good. It does not have T-marks on the top, for those of you guys who are concerned with that. Forward assist, of course, as well as our shell deflector standard quote-unquote mil spec in that regard. Charging handle that you've seen probably throughout the majority of the video is this one right here. It's the BCM, their new Gen 2 Mod 4, and this did not come with it. However, I put it in there simply because uh, shooting it with the standard um, you know, mil spec charging handle that came with, I was getting a lot of gas in the face. Now, to be fair, I was generally rapid firing it and or firing on a select fire lower. Um, but this little ridge here that the BCM has definitely does help prevent that. I didn't have an issue with it after that, but just pointing that out, it is a little bit on the gassy side for sure. Um, just because it's a traditional baffle style of suppressor. Now the bolt carrier that it comes with is all nitrided. Carrier itself is 8620 steel, full auto profile as you guys can see. Uh, we have good staking there on the screws. The screws are not YFS screws, which a lot of budget brands tend to go with uh, there on the gas key, so that certainly is good. I wiped it off, but it's still a little dirty. Uh, the bolt itself is made out of 9310 steel. It is MP tested, which is magnetic particle inspected. It is not HP tested. I've mentioned this before on the channel many, many times, but we always get new viewers here. Um, the HP testing that goes into bolts or barrels or anything like that is a proof round. What that does is it increases the stress on the, on the materials and then they magnetic particle inspect it to see if there's any, the easiest way to say it is like fractures or, or failures in the metal that you can't see with your naked eye. Um, but in this case, they didn't go with the HP testing, they just went MP. Now there's a huge debate online in the you know, knowledgeable AR-15 community as to whether or not the HP testing, which is quote unquote mil spec, actually damages the life of the bolt. So a lot of companies are foregoing it now. I will leave that to you guys to uh, discuss down below in the comment section. Feel free to do so. So our lower on this right here, this is a, again, Forge 7075 T6 aluminum uh, lower, nothing too fancy. We do have an ambidextrous selector, which I know a lot of folks do like, and we also do have a standard bolt uh, mag release. However, a lot of the radicals out there, you'll see them offered uh, lowers, you'll see them offered with a billet mag release from time to time. This one doesn't have it. Uh, we do have a slight flare there on the mag well, which I do dig. And one thing that I'm sure a lot of you guys will dig is that the lower itself and all radical firearms lowers that are currently being produced uh, as of, you know, what is this, August 2020, will have full auto pocket cut lowers. So um, should one day we ever get our rights back um, to be able to own select fire guns without any sort of government interference, you will be able to simply just drill a hole and drop your fire components in and you have a select fire um, lower receiver, which certainly is good. 
I honestly think every single AR-15 company out there in the market should make them like that. There's no reason not to. Um, so kudos to Radical for that. I will give them credit. And, uh, and then continuing on back, we do have our B5 Systems grip, which is a nice grip. I have many of them. It's got kind of that vertical angle to it there that a lot of folks do like, as opposed to the A2, which kind of stresses the wrist in an unnatural position when you're standing. We have our straight trigger guard, um, which you know a lot of folks do upgrade. I don't really mind it, but it, honestly, I do prefer a larger one, but unless I'm shooting more than a few hundred rounds a day, I tend not to notice it on my finger. Uh, continuing on back, we do have our standard uh, castle nut there and end plate. The, the castle nut is not staked, so ding them for that. However, it does seem to have some sort of thread locker on there because I, I did have to break it when I was testing it, you know, kind of break it loose. And then I saw that there was white crap in there, so they are at least thread locking it down. I would like to see them stake it. It is what it is. Uh, receiver extension there is 7075 T6 aluminum. It does have a made in America or made in the USA stamp on one side. It is a six position receiver extension there, as you guys can see. Now, one thing, again, mentioning a little bit earlier that it was a little bit on the gassy side, is that if you look there on the actual buffer itself, you can see it's kind of getting beat up a little bit around the edges. Most likely what that's actually do is it's Generally, at least from the pattern that I see there, it's very likely not the actual carrier going in there that's causing the damage. Because even if you look at the carrier, there's absolutely no damage there at the rear. No weirdo wear. It's very likely that this is coming back faster than normal. And those little chatter marks that you see there are actually from the uh, retaining pin actually impacting it there because the retaining pin is steel, as you would imagine. Um, so just pointing that out, no failures of any kind or anything like that. It's just, it's getting a little bit of chatter there, but again, it's a integrally suppressed gun, so there's a little bit more wear than you would normally see. And then continuing on back, we do have the B5 system SOT Mod Bravo stock. I have a full review on this stock if you guys are interested in way too many details and me talking about it ad nauseum. However, it's a fantastic stock. We have, I love it, big fan of it. Uh, two traditional sling mounting methods as well as quick detach uh, sling swivel mounts on both sides of the stock. Good to go in that regard. Can't complain about it. Typically at this point in the video is when I go over reliability, but we already covered that there. It's had no issues of any kind. It's eaten everything and I've primarily fed it uh, 5.56 M193 from LAX Ammo. So thanks to them for that. I appreciate it, which is probably why, again, I was saying it's a little bit on the gassy side. That's hotter ammo. My guess is they have it ported like many commercial uppers for, you know, Tula ammo in cold weather. Well, I'm shooting full power 5.56 in hot weather. Uh, so it's kind of on the other end of the spectrum there in terms of that cyclic rate that you're gonna get uh, with this type of offering. So the thing that I didn't cover at this point, which I'm sure everybody's interested in is the price point. Um, if you're gonna get one of the integrally suppressed upper receivers by itself, which comes with the bolt and uh, charging handle, comes in MSRP anyway at $1,099. If you're looking to buy the integrally suppressed rifle like we have here in either caliber, uh, 556 or 300 black it comes in msrp at 1299 uh, right now as of when i'm filming this this is the middle of the pandemic so like there's a run on everything if you guys are watching this a year or more out you might not even remember what i'm talking about um, but so things are kind of hard to come by right now they have a wait list and uh, regardless i will put a link down below in the video description or pinned in the comments where you guys can pick one up if you're looking to do so so I guess my thoughts on it overall. Well, uh, I really like the integrally suppressed upper receiver uh, type of concept. If you look around at the market right now, there's several companies, Gemtech Liberty, um, Daniel Defense, probably others that I'm just not thinking of off the top of my head that offer those type of offerings. And by far and away, this one is the least expensive, right? Now, in terms of value, I leave that up to you guys to determine because value is different to everyone as is worth. But in terms of, you know, kind of bang for the buck, if you're talking about an MSRP of, you know, $12.99 for this carbine, um, that's a lot of rifle for the money, in my opinion, particularly considering the decibel readings that you guys saw out there on the meter. Um, for a 5.56 gun, it's doing pretty darn well. Um, yeah, like we talked about, there's a few things I wish it kind of didn't have, like the trigger guard, didn't have a little bit of wiggle in the rail, but things happen. I'm guessing I could actually shim that up and fix it. Um, but that's 
or too much it. That's my experience with the guys. If you have any questions about this or anything like that, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. That is the best place to reach me if you actually have a question that you need to have answered uh, because I do see all the messages over there. Whereas on YouTube or elsewhere that I post, uh, sometimes I just don't see them because of the way the interface works as a you know content creator. So that's pretty much it. If you aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Regardless, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.